Everyone wants to have a protein powder that makes their life a little bit easier. I totally get it. Whole foods are always going to be better, but if you understand what is in your protein powder, you can at least make an educated decision that's gonna make it a little bit easier on your body. So Costco has a wide variety of protein powders and they all claim to do the same thing. Help build lean muscle, help support a healthy metabolism. You hear it all the time. But let's break down the ingredients a little bit and also look around at the price to see what's gonna be the best bang for the buck to help you get that muscle protein synthesis you need to be the healthiest but also most fit version of yourself. So let's roll on in to good old fashioned Costco Wholesale. And by the way, before we get totally rocking in the store, uh, check out Fat Snacks down below in the description. I put a link for them. So if you're doing a low carb diet or anything like that, they're just a really clean low carb cookie. So I just wanted to give them a huge shout out. They make a lot of this channel possible. So big shout out to them. Check them out down the link below after you watch this video. Let's head on in. Okay, let's go ahead and let's start with the whey proteins just because that's what people think of most of all when they look at protein powder. Um, okay, so this is a big flashy bag here. Let's take a look at this. Okay. That's a heavy bag. Okay, so this is Combat Protein Powder, Athlete's Complete Protein. Uh, let's see what's in it. Okay, so this is the thing. Now, a lot of times when you're just trying to go for the cheapest stuff, which, okay, let's see, $39.99. It's a good price for six pounds, but let's see what's in it. Okay, so we've got a micro-filtered protein blend. Let me teach you something really quick here. Whey protein concentrate and whey protein isolate, and then whey protein hydro, uh, excuse me, hydrolysate, and then micellar casein, and then egg albumin. So what they do is they say, okay, we have a wide variety of different proteins in here, so it makes it good. Well, the hard part is the first ingredient in that whey protein blend or in that protein blend is whey protein concentrate. Whey protein concentrate is not the cleanest whey protein. You see, you want whey protein isolate because that is the protein that has been isolated from the rest of the whey. The whey still has all the milk solids. It still has a lot of that stuff in there that is actually pro-inflammatory and not very good. Okay, the whey protein isolate, that's good. None of this stuff is organic or grass-fed though. Then we have more, uh, more whey protein here and then we have uh, micellar casein. Okay, so casein protein, they will lead you to believe that casein protein is healthy because it digests a little bit slower. Well, it digests slower because it forms a little bit of a, uh, like a gelatinous-like substance within your intestine, which by itself isn't all that bad. I mean, it's not that great. You are impeding digestion to some degree, but what's even worse is that casein protein is very inflammatory, okay? Because what casein protein does inside your body is it acts as a bioactive opioid, which sounds crazy, but it's the truth, okay? Here's what happens it triggers something known as BCM7. So it activates BCM7 or converts to BCM7 within your body. That is a bioactive opioid. Point is, is casein protein will make you addicted to dairy. And you notice that with cheese and things like that, which is fine if it's gonna be a whole food. The point is the neurological effect and sort of the neurotransmitter effect it has in your brain, but also the inflammatory effect it has in your body, that alone would have me stay away from this. Um, egg albumin, okay, there's some interesting science out there that shows you can't really get as much protein in an egg powder form. So, I don't know, I'm a little bit indifferent on that. Okay, then we have gluten-free cookie crumbs. Okay, shout out to them for at least making it gluten-free. Okay, that's a plus. They at least spent a couple extra cents doing that. But we got rice flour, then we've got sugar. Oh man, you're taking a perfectly good pro or halfway decent protein powder and adding sugar. Tapioca starch, which is a very common filler, common binder. Palm oil. Here's the thing, what we have to remember. You wanna get a whey protein that's low in fat. Whey protein spikes your insulin very high, even higher than white bread in some instances. That's not necessarily bad if you're looking for that. You want your protein levels to spike up, or excuse me, you want your insulin levels to spike when you're done with a workout, things like that, because it's gonna allow you to absorb the nutrients, it allows you to absorb the protein more. But when you have it combined with fat, the fat goes into storage too. So they add palm oil there to probably give it a little bit of thicker, creamier taste. We don't want that. Okay, not in this case. Cocoa powder uh, processed with alkali. So normally cocoa powder is okay, obviously. Okay, it's going to be antioxidant rich. It's going to be a very powerful thing. But when it's processed with alkali, it actually gets rid of a lot of the actual natural compounds that we want. So once it's processed with alkali, it's sort of Dutch processed, which can be good because they add some potassium to it. But in this case, it kills the, the positive effect of the cocoa powder. Okay, then we have cornstarch, which is a no-go. I mean, honestly, it's just a lot of ingredients in here. Sodium bicarbonate, no big deal. Soy lecithin, would like to avoid the soy. Inulin, okay, the inulin can be okay for digestive purposes. Natural, oh no, here we go. Sucralose, that's already bad. But then acyl sulfate and potassium, bad, bad move. Okay, that stuff is very toxic. That stuff is not good at all. Then, oh my gosh, okay, here's where we get bad. Look at they add aminos to it. 
So they're adding leucine, they're adding isoleucine, they're adding valine. Why do you need to add amino acids when you already have protein? Why? Because they're inflating the protein content. They don't need to add amino acids because the whey protein already has the amino acids in it. So why would they do that? Well, they do that because it's called amino spiking. Amino spiking is where they add extra amino acids to basically inflate the protein count because right now the technology can't differentiate between what an amino acid is and what full protein is, although our bodies can. So this is a hard pass. That's just, that makes me question a lot of things there. Okay, let's look at this one. Try to make this a little quicker. Then we have gold standard whey. Now, Optimum Nutrition has some good quality stuff. Um, no artificial growth hormones, that's nice. Let's look at the ingredients again here. Protein, oh man, protein blend, whey protein isolate, whey protein concentrate, and then whey peptides. Okay, so they still have concentrate, which means it's probably not the best one here. Uh, I will say, and here's teaching you a little something, is when something is on the label, the higher that it is on the ingredient list, the more of it there is. So in this case, the protein blend, the first part is whey protein isolate. The second part is whey protein concentrate. Compare that to the combat, which was concentrate first and isolate second. So this is better, okay? And then we go, ooh, okay, so natural and artificial flavors. Natural flavoring already is not good, okay? Natural flavoring can mean over a hundred, literally over a hundred different things, okay? It can mean over a hundred different things and they are basically uh, compounds that don't get tested and they can be sort of a discretionary uh, flavoring or a discretionary ingredient. So basically when they create something, when they create a natural flavor, it can have things that aren't natural. Plus there's no actual definition of natural. So it's a huge question mark. Okay, there's this big layer of just fogginess over natural flavors. But then they also have artificial flavors, which is just flat out bad. But then guess what they've got? Sucralose. But then they have acid sulfate potassium, which is a huge no-no. And they have that higher on the list than sucralose. So unfortunately, gold standard whey has got to go. Uh, they have one over here. Backing up. Okay, so this is also from Optimum Nutrition. Okay, this is just whey isolate. Okay, okay so here we have whey protein isolate. No other proteins in there. That's pretty cool. Just whey protein isolate, so just straight up that. Cocoa that's processed with alkali. So basically you're just going in cocoa flavor. You're not getting a lot of benefits of the cocoa. Natural flavors, eh, not good, but okay. It could be anything, right? That's the thing. Lecithin. It doesn't specify whether it's soy lecithin or what kind of lecithin it is. Could be sunflower lecithin, but when we actually look down here, we see it contains milk and soy. We can cross-reference and see that, yes, they probably mean soy lecithin. They're just not saying it on their ingredient list because they're worried that people might notice it. However, in the allergen panel, it does show that they have it. Here's what's cool. They've got salt, but then at least they're sweetening it with stevia. Okay, that's a plus. I gotta give them a big piece of credit there. Uh, probably why it's more expensive, right? And then xanthan gum, which, isn't a huge deal. Basically, you don't want to have a ton of it, but it's going to help draw some water into it. So it's going to make it a little bit more, uh, it's going to make it thicker. So when you do add your water to it, it mixes easier, makes it thicker. So I'll get this guy. That's a good one to go. Diametize, which I don't see anywhere. I don't even see a tag for it. This is actually, this also, this one, this is only $29.99, which is actually a really good deal for that. Um, let's see what's in this one. Okay, so we've got hydrolyzed whey protein isolate, uh, which is just supposed to help it absorb a little bit easier. Oh, this is actually a good product. Steviol glycoside, so it's just stevia. Vanilla extract, so they're not using natural flavors. They're, oh, yep, they have natural flavors, sorry. Soy lecithin. Um, so this would be slightly better because essentially you'd be absorbing it better. Okay, you'd be absorbing the uh, hydrolyzed whey protein isolate better than just straight up whey protein isolate. I don't see a price on this anywhere. Um, 5.3 pounds. I'm gonna hold on to it because that is a good one, but then I'll see if I can find a label for it. <laughs> yeah, like this, I mean, you're gonna pay 49. What, what you always wanna look at is how many grams of protein are in a scoop, but then how many servings are in it. So this is 80 servings per container. So yeah, it's way cheaper, but here you've only got about 40 servings per container. So you've got half the amount, but this one's $50, this one was $30. It's only effectively you know, a little bit more expensive to get the really good quality. So don't always go bang for the buck when it comes down to just poundage. You have to look at what you're actually gonna utilize out of it. Everyone wants to create a keto product, right? Okay, so this is the ketogenic collagen. 
and collagen is big in the keto world and we're all good with that, right? That's fine, but collagen has some huge benefits. So let's take a look at what's in this. Okay, collagen peptides, that's all good. Then we got coconut medium chain triglycerides, organic alkalized cocoa, acacia. You know what, this is actually a decent product. Let's see what they've got. It's a little pricey, $30 for 1.1 pounds. Uh, so collagen is interesting. You're not going to get a direct muscle growth result from collagen. Okay, what you're gonna get is you help build the type one and type three collagens, okay? And what that does is that gives you the infrastructure for this kind of protein to do its job, right? So you're giving yourself, you're building the scaffolding. So this isn't building muscle, it's helping build the scaffolding. And when you're on a ketogenic diet, a lot of times what can happen is you can lose some of that scaffolding because your body goes through gluconeogenesis and it breaks down connective tissue a little bit for extra glucose. Yes, your body can take things like uh, tissues and proteins and turn them into glucose when your body's in need of it. It's a demand-driven process. Really fascinating stuff. So this is interesting because this is actually very, very clean. Um, is it a good product overall? I mean, uh, Orgain actually is a decent product line. Um, I'm not in need of these, so I'm not gonna get these, but I would say this makes the cut. This would be okay. Okay, let's see Vega. Well, right now, you're also saving 10 bucks on this. So that's pretty cool, but let's see what's in it. Okay, so a lot of times these companies will say, oh, it's got a bunch of prebiotic fiber just because it has like acacia fiber or something in it. That's not necessarily like that cool of a thing. Like that's really just something they're gonna put in a product anyway and they're finding a way to market it. Um, so we've got pea protein. Okay, that could be anything. Okay, then we've got inulin from chicory root. That's exactly, so inulin is going to act as the prebiotic fiber. What that means is it's an indigestible fiber. And inulin is actually kind of cool because it has been shown to do some powerful things. So basically it gets into your small intestine and then it doesn't digest very well, which sounds bad at first, but that allows bacteria to feed on it within your gut. So when your bacteria can feed on it, well then guess what? That bacteria gets to grow. The bad thing is, is if you are in a state where you don't have a good uh, balance of gut bacteria, if you're in what is called gut dysbiosis, where you have bad bacteria overwhelming your gut, you're feeding that too. So what I recommend before having any kind of inulin or any kind of prebiotic fiber is do a little bit of fasting and reset your gut. Okay, that's gonna kill off some of the gram negative bad bacteria, and then you can introduce these things a little bit easier. Anyway, onward and upward. Natural flavors, um, again, we're gonna see that everywhere, so we kind of have to take it with a grain of uh, flavor, right? Pumpkin seed protein, which is an interesting uh, profile there. Organic ginger powder, uh, ferment, uh, excuse me, fermented organic quinoa sprout, fermented organic amaranth sprout. Okay, so that's where they're really getting the prebiotic effect. So credit to them there. Acacia gum, uh, and then they add some probiotics to it. And they also add protease enzymes to help with uh, digestion. And then monk fruit, I, huge kudos to them. They're actually sweetening it with uh, monk fruit, which is not a cheap way to sweeten it. Monk fruit's expensive. Usually they'll opt for stevia, which is great, but monk fruit is more expensive. And with that price point, um, that's the bummer is it doesn't give you a price per serving. It gives you a price per pound, which doesn't really matter because who's consuming a pound of this stuff? Um, the one thing that concerns me is they have all these organic ingredients, but they're using organic ingredients on the ingredients that they use very little of. So for example, the ginger. Okay, you're not gonna have much ginger. So they go for all these organic ingredients when they're not using much of it, but for the bulk of it, like the pea protein, it's not even organic. So, okay, there's some marketing twisting going on here. Um, it's interesting. It might be one that I consider getting, but I don't like the inulin because it's gonna kind of slow down digestion of the particular protein powder. Inulin has its place, but that's not gonna make my cut. Okay, a lot of people have been asking about the Premier Proteins, and I'm just gonna grab one of them because they're all the same. The only difference is that they have different flavors. Um, I can already tell you right out the gate, <laughs> these things are gonna be pretty sketch. Anything RTD, you just have to be careful with. Okay, it's all about weight, right? This stuff is not, uh, not cheap to ship, and it's not cheap to store on a grocery store shelf, which means that they're gonna do whatever they can to inflate their margin, but they already are because it's mainly just water, right? It's, they're basically selling you water and a little bit of protein powder. So you're getting, uh, it's $1.49 a piece, which is not that bad, I guess. But let's see what's in it. Okay, and I know a lot of people that will just jump on these things. Um, okay, so ingredients. First ingredient's water. Then the second, look at milk protein uh, concentrate, not even whey protein concentrate. So they're taking everything from the milk, concentrating into a protein, basically a milk powder. So that's low quality right there. Calcium caseinate, okay, that's uh, essentially a preservative. Then we, it contains less than 1% of high oleic sunflower oil. High oleic sunflower oil is actually not all that bad. 
but in this case, they're using it as a stabilizer. And I can explain a little bit more about that in a minute, uh, probably with some other products. Natural and artificial flavors, already er, inulin, not that bad. Cellulose gel and cellulose gum. That is straight up to give it consistency and make it smooth. Then we have salt, okay. Sucralose, ACE-K, acid sulfate and potassium, bad stuff. Carrageenan, okay, we have another stabilizer in there. You see that in cottage cheese and things like that a lot. So we really have to be careful with a lot of the stuff that's in this. And you know, if we, another thing, okay, then we have uh, tripotassium phosphate, we have dipotassium phosphate and sodium, holy, hexametaphosphate. Because this is basically a bunch of just chemicals in a can or in a container, okay? Not what we wanna be rolling with, not the best way to get your protein. They don't even really have good quality whey protein. There's no protein in there other than milk protein. So we're looking at 30 grams of protein, but what the heck is it even coming from? I mean, it's really just not even that good of stuff. Okay, so no artificial growth hormones. Well, okay, if that's your claim to, I, it's a bummer. Okay, that stuff's, you could go a lot of different directions with that. Let's take a look at the, actually that's like a, that gets into the insurers. So we'll come down this way. Okay, so I haven't even seen the price tag for this one yet. It just makes the cut. I probably won't get it because it's a mystery. Um, let's take a look at... I'm going to get this one to try it. We get to do Costco a solid since we are filming in their store. And it did make the cut. I just don't like all the fiber in it because I'll probably end up getting bloated from it. Okay, let's look at some of these. Uh, now we're getting into the plant-based stuff. Wild. Okay, so... Mm, that's heavy. Take a look at this. I've never looked at this one, so you're learning with me. Filtered water, pea protein. Okay, off to a decent start. Organic alkalized cocoa. Same kind of deal. You're getting the flavor, but you're not necessarily getting any of the actual stuff that matters, right? You're not getting the, the big polyphenol effect. You're not getting the antioxidant effect. You're not getting, well, you're probably still going to get a little bit of the uh, endocannabinoid effect, which is kind of what makes you addicted and feel good and kind of that sense of well-being you get from chocolate. Then we have natural flavors, that's gonna happen. That's again, always. Organic high oleic something. Okay, big kudos to them. Organic oleic sunflower oil. Here's the thing. What that means is it's somewhat concentrated sunflower oil to the point where they actually get it a, to be a really high monounsaturated fat content. And oleic acid, if you've watched my other videos, olive oil, macadamia nut oil, avocado oil, all have high amounts of oleic acid. Oleic acid is a it's the monounsaturated fat that is very, very healthy and has very powerful mechanisms within the body. There is a process in the body that converts oleic acid into something known as oleolethanolamide, OEA, which is very powerful at doing specific things at a genetic level to turn on or activate like PPAR alpha, which is going to help with uh, your body heat. So basically, a long story short, it's making a kind of an outlandish claim to say straight up that it's going to help you burn fat, but indirectly, it can help you with thermogenesis and help you burn more fat. And it's actually fairly profound. Point is, is here, when it's high oleic, that means that they take sunflower oil and they actually concentrate the oleic acid. They're not doing it for the sake of fat burning. I look at that for the sake of fat burning, but they're doing that for the sake of stabilization. It actually makes it shelf stable and it makes it shelf stable in a relatively healthy way. They could add other gums and other stabilizers to it, but they actually are doing it in an organic way, which I have to give them some huge credit there. And then we have rice bran. They're probably doing this as a thickener, but here's the big problem with rice bran. So you've heard of white rice and you've heard of brown rice. Okay, brown rice has the husk, it has the bran. Well, what they do is they take that brown portion and they turn it into a bran, right? And they add it to this drink. And it can make it a little gritty, but it can also thicken it. Well, here's the problem. That bran is chock full of anti-nutrients. Okay, so the browning part, the brown part of rice is very high in phytic acid and other anti-nutrients that negate a lot of the benefits of what we're looking at here to begin with. So when you have rice bran, you lose some of the absorption of what you're getting here to begin with. Okay, something to look for. Try sodium phosphate, uh, you're gonna see that a lot. Try potassium citrate, that stuff. Gel and gum. Uh, kudos to them again for using monk fruit. Organic fruit and vegetable blend. Okay, then they add some other things. You know, these are actually okay. So, container, organic acai. There's some good stuff in here. It is very high carb though. So if you're looking for just a traditional protein powder, um, I would not necessarily recommend this. This isn't something I would drink all the time, but it's something if maybe you've got a, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a kid that just wants to have something semi-healthy and you don't want to give them a milkshake. This might not be a bad mix. And that's actually a good price. We're looking at $18.99 right now with a particular sale going on. 
So that's not bad. I'm going to get some of these because at the very least, um, I know some people that consume them. Well, actually, here we go. Ah, okay. I knew that Orgain had this and I haven't seen it yet. So this was the plant-based version. Now we've got their grass-fed protein shake. One thing to know about whey protein in general, just like when you're shopping for beef, grass-fed doesn't mean a whole lot. It just means that at some point the cow ate grass. A lot of times they'll feed them grass pellets. Okay, so when they feed them grass pellets, they can still call them grass-fed. And then they just give them a bunch of corn too, because grass doesn't put the weight on them cost-effectively. Corn and soy and things like that do. So let's take a look at what's in this. So I just, fair warning there, unless it says grass finished, it's probably not doing you much good. This one's a little smashed up. But. Okay, filtered water, grass-fed, ooh, see, it's not even grass-fed whey, it's grass-fed milk protein concentrate. Organic agave, ooh, okay, we'll come back to that one. Cocoa powder, but at least it's not alkalized. Natural flavors, eh. Okay, organic high oleic sunflower oil, big thing again. Vegetable glycerin, not a big deal. They're probably using that I don't know why they would be using glycerin in this case. Like we'll use glycerin kind of in the manufacturing world sometimes as a carrier for like liposomal micellar delivery and more complicated things. I don't know. I honestly don't know why they're using that there. Cellulose. Okay. Uh, rice extract. So in this case, they're using rice extract versus bran, rice bran extract. I would actually prefer this. So I might have to sneeze. Actually, no, I don't. thought I had to sneeze. I would actually prefer rice extract over rice bran extract because then we don't have the bran. We don't have the anti-nutrient effect. Then we have sodium polyphosphate. That one, to be completely honest, I'd have to investigate a little bit more. Magnesium phosphate, potassium citrate, potassium chloride, which is really just potassium, tricalcium phosphate, sea salt, monk fruit extract. Okay, so then we start going down the same kind of stuff they had in this. Uh, in this particular case, you also have 11 grams of carbohydrates. If you're looking bang for the buck, honestly, in this case, go for the plant-based one because this whey one is not even really whey. It's a milk protein and it probably tastes better, but it's not better for you. You know, they have one for kids. I'm a little hesitant to ever look at the ones that are for kids because you never know. Okay, organic grass-fed protein. So it looks like we're going to end up... Let's see. Milk protein concentrate. Okay, so at least this has the whey protein concentrate better than just milk protein. Organic cane sugar. If it's for kids, you got to put sugar in it, right? But it's organic. Okay, honestly, I've seen enough. That actually makes me question this one. And you know, I realized, I forgot to talk about the agave for a second. The reason that agave is an issue in this stuff, agave seems like it's a healthy choice, right? The problem is it's not. Okay, agave is like 85% fructose. And here's a quick lesson for you. Fructose, the sugar that comes from fruit, our bodies can only handle a small amount of it at a certain time. Our liver has to process fructose. Whereas other carbohydrates get utilized by other cells and they go up into the muscle and things like that. Fructose has to get used by, has to get used by the liver. So that means that if we have too much, the liver can't handle it, we develop fatty liver. But also probably more of concern to those of you that are watching this channel, it's a lot easier to store fat. It's called de novo lipogenesis. So agave is in disguise as a really healthy sweetener. But when it's concentrated like that, no, it's straight up bad. So almost all the carbohydrates that are coming from that are coming from agave, which is very likely to store as fat. So big concern there. Okay. Out of respect of everyone, so I'm not in the aisle, I'm gonna grab one of each of these. The superfood one. And let's come over here where we can be a little bit more discreet. Um, I've never seen these before. These are all Orgain. It's very obvious that Costco has a big deal going with Orgain right now. And so far, I'm kind of okay with what I've been seeing. Um, let's start with the, let's start with the simple. Okay, so it says organic plant protein powder. Uh, made from nuts and seeds, almonds, peanuts, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds. Wow, it's kind of cool. Organic uh, protein blend. Organic free protein. Yes, thank you for starting organic. Already with a good clean pea protein. Organic peanut flour. Okay. The reason I'm not a fan of peanut flour is because it's a legume. But I don't know. I'm not in their marketing brain. I'm not in their product development brain. But there is a lot of people out there. There are, excuse me, there are a lot of people out there that have peanut allergies and a lot of people that just stay away from peanuts. It seems a little short-sighted to use peanut flour when there probably would have been other choices, but I think I see where they were going with this. They wanted an overall nut blend that didn't have, um, didn't have any kind of grains or anything like that in it, so I get it. Okay, then we got organic pumpkin seed protein, which is great, organic almond protein, which is great, organic chia protein, which gives you a good amount of fiber, but also gives you the omega-3s, although they are technically coming from um, 
alpha linolenic acid, which isn't going to be the most usable form of omega-3. It's okay, it's still somewhat usable. Then we've got organic coconut sugar, still a sugar, but okay. Then we have organic alkalized cocoa, organic and natural flavors. I kind of wish they just used stevia versus organic coconut sugar because the coconut sugar, although low glycemic, it's still a sugar, okay? It can still trigger glycation. It can still have these issues. It's kind of interesting. I just wish it didn't have the, and two scoops, 100. So bang for the buck though, I don't think you're getting that much. It doesn't seem like it's that much of a bargain because it's, let's see, 23, 23.99 normally, like 27.99, and you're getting 24 servings. Uh, it's kind of wild, and the protein that you're getting just way too high in carbohydrates. I probably would probably pass on that, but we'll weigh these out first. Okay, then we have organic protein plus superfoods. Whoa. Okay, that's a lot of ingredients. So the first thing that I look at is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. But I do notice that the bulk of those ingredients are coming from their organic 50 superfoods blend. So we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, the first thing, pea protein that is not organic. Okay, never mind. It says organic, organic protein blend. So it is organic. But we've got pea protein, then we've got brown rice protein. All right, so then once again, with the brown rice protein, we end up, that's just a lower quality protein. But then we have chia seed protein. So they kind of make that up a little bit, get a nice nutrient. Um, blend there. Then we have Orgain Organic Creamer Base, which is acacia. Hey, they're cool. They have the high oleic sunflower oil again. And they have rice dextrin. Okay, here's a funny one. So rice dextrin, you've heard of maltodextrin before. Okay, maltodextrin is made from wheat, essentially. And it is there to add body and is there to add flavor. And it's not really there to add, make it sweet. It's kind of like more like a cornstarch in a way, but it's really not good stuff. They're trying to go the gluten-free route. So by going gluten-free, they use rice dextrin, which quite frankly is still very high glycemic, and I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, however, it is at least organic, so they got that going. But then they have the rice bran extract. I wish they didn't put that in there because the rice bran extract ends up taking away any of the, uh, the effects of the minerals that you have in here. And they have all these minerals and all these superfoods that are apparently just abundant, uh, like abundant nutrient profiles, minerals and vitamins, and then you can't even get them because <laughs> you're not absorbing them. Then we have um, ro rosemary extract, that's fine. Erythritol, that's really random. It's really random to see that they have erythritol in here. I don't see stevia, I don't see... They're using erythritol as the sweetener, like out of the blue. This doesn't make sense. Not bad, but just doesn't make sense. Okay, then they have the other 50 superfoods blend. The one thing I'm going to touch on here really quick, a lot of this stuff is fine, but millet is dangerous stuff. Okay, millet is really, really an anti-nutrient disaster. One of the worst, okay? Millet has been, it's been noted as something that you really need to be concerned with if you have a thyroid disease or if you're worried about your thyroid. What it does is it zaps your body of iodine, okay? And people think that millet is just one particular grain. Millet is like a subset of like 500 different forms, right? You can have all kinds of different millet, but they all have an effect on your iodine levels. Now, if you watch my videos, you know how important iodine is to the conversion of T4 to T3. So your body can create that triiodothyronine, which is the thyroid hormone your body needs to rev up the metabolism. We have a big problem here. That alone, I'm like, and that's the first part here. It looks like they might have taken a cheap way out on that, which really is unfortunate because overall, I haven't been too disappointed with what I've seen with Orgain. Um, I'm going to put this down now. That, that kills it for me. I don't want the millet. Okay, then we have organic protein plus probiotics. supposed to be digestive health. Organic protein blend. Pea protein, once again. Organic brown rice protein. Organic chia seed. Okay. Organic acacia. Okay. Organic high oleic sunflower. That's really cool because at least it's organic and it's still the high oleic. Uh, the rice dextrin, better than maltodextrin. Organic rice bran. Um, okay, I'm talking about that. Organic rosemary, and then the erythritol again, then alkalized cocoa, organic acacia, organic natural flavors, sea salt, stevia, guar gum. I, it's cleaner, but here's the thing. I don't like erythritol in protein powders because they tend to bloat you. I like erythritol when it's in like a sweet treat or when you're baked good or you're making a keto cookie or a low carb thing. I don't like it if you're trying to consider it a probiotic or if you're trying to consider it some form of uh, prebiotic even because it's, it's gonna help 
grow intestinal flora because it essentially doesn't get digested. So I don't like that. I wish they didn't do that because otherwise it would be okay. Um, so I'm gonna put these two back. I'm gonna try this one because the only beef I really had this, this one was the peanut flour in there. So put these guys back. Oh, I see a, uh, I see a Vital Proteins one over there that I missed. Let's talk on this one real quick. I still haven't found this mystery one. Dang it, it's a bummer because it's kind of a good product. Okay, let's see what we got here. This will probably be the last one. Collagen peptides, Vital Proteins, what we got? Grass-fed and pasture-raised. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's finished, but let's see here. Mm, am I missing the ingredients here? Am I just, oh, it's unflavored. That's what's awesome about it. Oh, okay, straight up just unflavored collagen. Yeah, this one's cool. Yeah, so when it comes down to the vital protein, so you, you can't even find the ingredient list on it because all that's in it is unflavored collagen. Like you just have 20 grams of collagen peptides. It's straight up. I can't find any stabilizers, any binders, anything like that. One simple ingredient, yeah. 20 collagen peptides, 20 grams collagen peptides, one simple ingredient, keto paleo friendly. This stuff's awesome, okay? I have an abundance of collagen at my house, so I'm not gonna buy this one. But this one, in terms of, so you've got this or the keto collagen, this is a much better product and it's gonna be tasteless. You mix it into yogurts, mix it into things. So huge props to Vital Proteins or huge props to Costco for having them in there because I know it's hard to get into Costco. It's not always easy. Okay, and I think that's just about it. Um, I have one of these at home actually. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this mystery one. <laughs> because it's just, it's a good product, even though I don't see anything here. And I think that's it. I think we've got all the protein powders that are currently at Costco. Now, if you have ideas for more of these kinds of videos, things you wanna see at Costco, let me know, because I absolutely would love to do more of these style of videos, all right? So as always, do keep it locked in here on my channel. Make sure you're always checking everything out that I'm posting daily, and I will see you in the next video.